Well, good morning and welcome on this Monday Thursday, this Holy Thursday. Monday, mandatum, uh, means a command. And it is a command from our Lord and Savior that uh, as often as we gather, we should partake in his true body and true blood for the forgiveness of sins. And so it is with our readings today, we really see a foreshadowing. Uh, our reading uh, will be from Exodus chapter 12, which is the Passover. Uh, and we would be celebrating the Passover Seder this week. Uh, and we'll also be reading from Psalm 37, verses 1 through 7. But we're going to really take a look at the foreshadowing of the covenant meal that God gives to Israel in Exodus, Exodus 24, and also that covenant meal uh, that Jesus gives to us on that um, Monday, Thursday, that uh, night in which he was betrayed. And so let us begin this morning as we uh, open with prayer, but I would like to open, as opposed to our morning prayer, uh, let's open this morning with the Lord's Prayer. Please join along. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, again, our first reading then today, if you're joining along on your, in your Bibles, is uh, Psalm 37, verses 1 through 7. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers. For they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desire of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. And our uh, second reading this morning again comes to us from the book of Exodus, uh, chapter 12, beginning with verse 1. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lentil of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire. With unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat of any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted, its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it. With your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations as a statute forever. 
you shall keep it as a feast. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove leaven out of your houses. For if anyone eats what is leavened from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. On the first day you shall hold a holy assembly, and on the seventh day a holy assembly. No work shall be done on those days, but whatever everyone needs to eat, that alone may be prepared by you. And you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for on this very day I brought your hosts out of the land of Egypt. Therefore you shall observe this day throughout your generations as a statute forever. In the first month from the fourteenth day of the month at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the twenty-first day of the month at evening. For seven days no leaven is to be found in your houses. If anyone eats what is leavened, that person will be cut off from the congregation of Israel. Whether he is a sojourner or a native of the land, you shall eat nothing leavened. In all your dwelling places you shall eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go and select lambs for yourselves according to your clans and kill the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and touch the lentil and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. None of you shall go out of the door of his house until the morning, for the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lentil and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you. You shall observe this right as a statute for you and for your sons forever. And when you come to the land that the Lord will give you, as he has promised, you shall keep this service. And when your children say to you, what do you mean by this service? You shall say, it is a sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, for he passed over the houses of the people of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians, but spared our houses. And the people bowed their heads and worshiped. Then the people of Israel went and did so. As the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. This is the word of the Lord. And uh, I, many of you know how much I just love the Old Testament because it so points to the New Testament and, and to our own daily lives. We talk in Bible study quite often about what are those things that we keep as memorials or, or symbols to remind us of what God has done for us and um, I know sometimes it becomes a challenge for some of us readers as we're in the Old Testament and we get all this detail and, and it almost seems like it's, it's overkill uh, and, and to the point where, boy, why has it become so redundant? And how beautiful is it that God would give us so much detail as he's preparing us for the coming of his son? And, and we see uh, the the um, Christological nature of what's taking place in this reading because it points to the meal, the covenant meal that, that God is going to give to Moses uh, in Exodus chapter 25. It also points to that covenant meal uh, that Jesus gives to us on this night, this, this Monday, Thursday, that command uh, for us to gather together and as often as we do to partake in this meal in remembrance of him and what he's done for us. Uh, but I just kind of want to go through a couple of the verses here um, because it, what's alluded in the detail in, in verses 8 and 9 is that the, the, the ultimate sacrifice that that animal made uh, and, and how the animal was prepared and there was no breaking of the bones and so they would have been um, taking the animal apart uh, without breaking the bones at the ligaments and joints. Uh, and, and it so reminds us that Jesus' bones were not broken on the cross. And, and the blood that was shed for those animals was used. And this was a life-giving blood for those animals. It was used to paint on those doorposts and on the lentil, the, the, the top of the door, uh, to protect God's children, the, the believers, and, and the angel of the Lord would pass by those houses. And who was it that was killed on this night? But the firstborn child, the firstborn male. 
And who was that lamb of sacrifice, that, that final propitiation for our sins? None other than that firstborn male, that, that son of God, Jesus Christ. And, and so we see so much pointing to the cross, pointing to that victory that we will celebrate tomorrow and through the weekend through his death and resurrection. And, uh, and so we see that in verse 9. Uh, but then in verse 11, um, we hear from Moses, In this manner you shall eat it with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Why so much detail about our attire and how we're to be dressed up? Well, they were preparing to leave, to be taken out of, of Egypt. And, and so they needed to be dressed and ready, shoes on their feet, staff in their hand to, to, to go running joyfully towards the promised land. And, and how about us when we come to church, when we dress up, prepared to stand before the Lord, to be fed his word and sacraments, and then we come joyfully running to his table to receive his true body and true blood. And then we continue as we go on to verse 12, uh, that it to verse 12 says, I will strike all the firstborn in the land. And again, we kind of talked about the firstborn male and how Christ was struck down for us. And then there's the sign in verse 13, the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. That very same blood was sprinkled upon us in holy baptism. And that blood that we receive in the sacrament of the altar uh, feeds us. And it is, is God residing within us, uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, with that promise of eternal life and salvation. And so that anger, that wrath of God, which is justifiable, he passes over us because of the blood that Christ shed because of the sprinkling of the water that was poured on us. And then verse 17, and you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread for on this very day, I brought your host out of the land of Egypt to observe. And so tonight when we go uh, to worship via, via live, of course, on, on streaming or, or later on YouTube, but when we go and we hear that glorious message tonight from our Lord, uh, and we crave and desire to come to the table of the Lord during this time, what a blessing it is for us to remember why and who it is that instituted this glorious meal and, and how he has called us to come forward and, and the frequency of coming forward. It's as often as we gather and, and how wonderful will it be one day soon uh, and how much we will appreciate that meal when we come back into the sanctuary and worship together as the body of Christ. And so we do this in remembrance of him, like those memorials, the crosses that we hang on our walls, the pictures that depict our Lord and Savior or the Last Supper, or whatever those mementos are that we have, those memorials, those remembrances. It's all pointing to what Christ accomplished on the cross and what he promises us in this meal. Um, one of the commentators, I've got two different things to kind of close on, says, the blood of Jesus Christ protects us against wrath, against death and destruction. It reconciles us with God. It makes us members of his church. This lamb we should eat. We should receive Christ into our hearts as our redeemer. Therefore, also purge out the old leaven. That's that old Adam, that sin that keeps growing in us. And, and be his own in sincerity and truth. Thus we obtain strength for our pathway through the wilderness of this world to the true Canaan above, that being the Holy Land. And then the other commentary that I just wanted to touch on, in this new life, dedicate yourself in service to him, for God has revealed the redeeming grace of his love and forgiving power of his mercy by the blood of the new covenant. That blood spilled on the altar of the cross now saves you. You are his forever. How wonderful is that to be reminded that because of the sprinkling of that blood, Christ's blood on, on that altar, that wooden altar, the cross, uh, that we are forever God's children and in his protection, in his loving arms. 
And so how great it is today that uh, we prepare for this wonderful meal, this, this mandatum, the, the Monday Thursday, the command from our Lord. So at this time, you know, over the last couple of weeks, we received uh, quite a few prayers and, um, and plus some new ones of, of late. Uh, so I'd like to just take a little bit of time to uh, pray for all these people. So uh, please join with me. Uh, first off, we'd like to pray for Rob. We'd like to pray for Caitlin Hunt, uh, our sister here in our community, that she may receive surgery soon and bring her to good health. Uh, to Wendy Larson, to, to Dave Ketchum and his wife who's battling cancer, uh, to Marilyn, to Rose, Sarah, all those who are dealing with depression, to Scott and Bonnie Bacallier, uh, to uh, Burdell Christians, Lynette, Stacy, Tracy, Pauline, Ken and Jean Fast, all the farmers who are uh, so diligent in their jobs and we pray that they have a good season to Darcy to Don to our medical staff uh, to our mail carriers to every everyone who who is working out in the fields today who who is not able to stay home to protect their own health but is out there serving on our behalf Lord we also raise up for you our our, our government our, our leaders our officials here in our state um, and and our students who who are at home learning uh the teachers who who love them miss them and and wish that they could be with them but uh will be working diligently through distant learning uh we we also pray for our parents our grandparents and all those who are separated from loved ones uh lord we come to you this morning in prayer and so we we thank you for what you've given to us and uh, we say, O oh Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you so much for being with us this morning and and uh, I look forward to seeing you all tonight as we celebrate the command that uh, Monday, Thursday, that blessed meal that Christ so graciously gives to us. So go in peace today and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.